Before we get started, I would like to thank everyone who has watched our videos over the last few years, joined our YouTube channel, or liked us on Facebook for their support and encouragement. Your views, comments, and likes have really helped make our tutorial series a reality. With that said, I would like to reintroduce our free Rocket D's tutorials. This series takes an in-depth look at animating a convincing bird in After Effects with the help of Metal's Freeform Pro plugin and some basic expressions. We also touch on some other cool features like creating snow and smoke using trap coats particular. To get you started, we have made the finished After Effects project files available for free on our website. There is both a CS 5.5 and a CS 6 version that also includes the original Photoshop file used to build the bird. In this series, we will take a step-by-step -step approach to constructing the wings and particles. The rigging of the bird's body with the puppet tool will be reviewed with a more general approach, but if you need a more in-depth look at creating bones for characters using the puppet tool and null objects, you can check out some of our other videos on our YouTube channel. Okay, so for all of you eager to get your hands dirty and just jump in, you can head on over to our website at e-d-films.com and download the project files from our Rocketees page or just follow the link below. You will also find the links you need to get your hands on a trial version of Freeform and Particular, which you will need to get the full benefits of the project files. If you don't have either of those plugins, you can still open the project file. After Effects will just tell you that there's a missing plugin and you won't have access to those features. For the rest of you who would like to know what you're getting yourselves into, I will be going through the entire scene file and show you how to use the Rocket D rig and what's involved in making this go throughout the rest of this video. And if you are interested in how to build this bird, make sure you check back for the remaining tutorials on building the bird's wing using Freeform Pro, creating the snow and smoke effects using Particular, and using the puppet tool to rig up the bird's body. When you actually open the project file, you will be greeted with a big screen just like this. It doesn't look much like the actual animation, and if you scrub through, you're going to see the bird. Now, there's a whole bunch of other layers going on here, but I've actually deactivated them so that if you are working on a slower computer, it's not going to crash up your computer while you're loading. If you are finding it's having trouble, just poke the caps lock button, and what that will do is that will disable the refresh so that you'll at least be able to open the scene and get into things without having to render the full frame. And you can drop this down to a quarter or whatever your custom settings might suit you. The other thing I've turned off is the actual depth of field, which added a lot of the dimension and depth to the scene. You'll have to go in and turn it back on and then just turn off these isolate layer buttons there and then everything will come back on. The last thing is more to do with the actual bird. There's a couple of controls in this actual scene here. I just pressed U to enable the animation. There's a lot of a lot of stuff going on with just the position and Z rotation. So the Z rotation obviously just moves the bird up and down. And when you're animating, I strongly recommend turning everything off. Actually, just isolate. I'm going to isolate just the bird. And sometimes I left the background on just so I could reference what was going on. Uh, so I had a ground reference. And right now it's an adaptive. If you set it to fast draft, you can actually work animation a lot faster. And if things start getting slow, just make sure you clear out your memory every now and then so you can go to edit, purge all memory, and that'll just sort of clear out what you've accumulated. There's a bit going on. There's the bird's Z rotation, which is the angle that the bird is here. And I sort of pivoted off the rocket pack right there at that point because I felt like that'd be the heaviest point uh, or at center of gravity. And then I have this thing called character Y angle and character X angle. And what that does is appears to rotate the bird in three-dimensional space. And I say appears because it's actually not rotating the bird. It's actually rotating a camera inside the bird's composition. And what this allowed me to do is that as the bird flew past the camera, when the bird was further over to the right, I rotated the bird on the y-axis more this way so that you get that parallax effect as the bird crosses the camera because the bird's actually just a two-dimensional card sitting in space. And the reason I had to do that is that leads us into the actual bird itself. Because I'm using Freeform Pro, I couldn't continuously rasterize this layer. If I were to do that, it breaks the wings. So let's just enable continuously rasterize. You see things don't line up anymore. 
it couldn't actually have the camera dynamically updating itself with the bird scene. There are ways you could do it. I just didn't I just didn't bother. Plus the code to like track them is a little more complicated. I actually give an example of how to track After Effects objects to Freeform Pro objects in my Rigging a Realistic Characters tutorial series on AE Toots Plus. Now what's happening when I'm actually rotating, pulling these sliders here, is it's rotating this null object this null object is centered on the bird. So if we just go to, I'm going to go to navigation camera and I have to enable the navigation camera, make it the primary camera so that Freeform actually sees that camera as the working camera. If you don't have that camera enabled, what will happen is you'll be able to look at the bird, but the wings won't actually move. Okay. So you have to make sure that the navigation camera is activated. And what you'll see is this null object is right at the center here. So there's the other camera over there. This is the actual do not move camera. And when this null object is rotated, so I'll just disable these bits of code here. When this null object is rotated, it's actually moving around the camera, the actual do not move camera. So let's just make that the active camera. I'm going to turn off this top one. So now when I actually rotate these values around, the camera is actually rotating off of that null object. And that's because it's parented to the navigation camera is parented here. And so what that allows me to do is have a freeform object combined with another three dimensional object, which is this bird and have it react believably without having to try to glue the wings onto the bird. So I were to rotate this bird in three dimensional space, nothing happens. The wing doesn't stick to it, even though uh, the bird is 3d, it doesn't stick to it. So I would have had to use some code to actually glue the wings onto the bird. But doing this method, I don't have to. It's just a shortcut. It's not necessarily the best way to do it, but it is a method that you can try. The actual bird is set to continuously rasterize because it is three dimensional. So if I go into this scene and I didn't, I, I didn't want it to be flat. I wanted it to have some dimension because I am moving this do not move camera around to give it some depth. I want that depth to show up. Okay, so we're just in that camera. So you can see that these back legs and stuff like that, if I manipulate the um, camera pivot here, if I rotate the camera pivot, you can see that the, the bottom legs sort of move, they move, they give that sense of depth. So I wanted that, I wanted that to play through. So that's why the bird is actually continuously rasterized. Now when you're animating the bird, there's a couple of different things going on. There's the actual wing, the freeform animation, which is happening on the wing. This is just all the flapping of the wings and the basic rotation. So I have the mesh distortion, and then I have the position of the wings moving just to make the shoulder work a little better. And then I have these different rotations that are making the, just, just moving the wing the way I wanted it to move. Okay. And then what I did is I animated the character based on those wing positions. What you can do once you understand the scene a little better is you can lock this if you have a specific pose you're looking for and you can go into the body comp of the character and just keep looking at this and you can manipulate things like let's say for instance i want to manipulate the, the neck i can just rotate this neck and i see it i don't see it real time though so you do have to either click it and like shift plus or minus on your number pad to reposition reposition it'll automatically create a keyframe so that's one way of doing it or you can go into this comp but this way you can create poses once you understand better how to move the bird and you can actually move things around and still be in this scene other other than that what you would end up doing is going inside this scene and this is where all the actual animation takes place of the of the bird i don't want to get into a whole bunch of detail i do go through all of this in greater depth in the next part of this tutorial but essentially what's going on here is these are all your layers that you can use to animate the bird. You don't need to worry about this layer here. We'll just turn that off. These are all your controls right here. These, these controls here uh, control the talons. They control the thumb. If you want to animate them together, you just shift select them. And you can pull it back and forth. And this, this manipulates the leg angle and the knee. So it's pretty self-explanatory. This happens on both legs. I've got it all linked up and the, this is the other leg here in red. Actually, I can change these to orange since that's the center of the body. Okay, so then we have the hips. We can animate the hips here. The torso, the torso rotates the torso up and down. 
Now you got to be careful. The rocket, I didn't actually design this to be animated like this, so the rocket is cut off on the bottom. So that's one of the only problems there. The shoulder you can position, or you can just rotate this guy here, and that'll make the shoulder go up and down. And we've already done the neck. And then for the tail, this here is the middle of the tail, and this here is the base of the tail. I didn't link the tail up to the actual pivot of the of this little guy here, so it's it's a little bit limited. You can do that if you want, though. Just add another puppet pin to the tip and marry them together, and it'll it'll work great. Next thing we'll do is we'll break down some of the code that's actually on here. Okay, on this bird, I have at the very top this thing called wing flap values, essentially tracking the rotation value of the left wing the X rotation value of the left wing. Now this wing is just going up and down. So as you can see, it's going up and down. And as this wing rotates on the X, it actually affects a number of the different parts of the character's body. So if you look back here, there's really no animation on this character for the first five seconds other than a little bit of head animation, a little bit of animation on the neck, and yet the whole body's moving. The reason this is happening We'll just take a, maybe let's take a look at the neck here, which is one of them. The reason this is happening is that every one of these layers is tracking that wing rotation X value. So I created a little null object here that's holding this little piece of code that is essentially watching to see what the rotation X value is on this, on this object here. And the way I did that, it was really, really easy. If I just delete that code. But what I did is I created a rotation slider. So if we open up the effects, I created a, a slider. And actually, let's just rename that to wing. And I'm just, instead of rotation, I'll just call it rot, short for rotation. So ring, wing rotation X. And then what I can do is alt click on that angle, pick whip, and then go to the composition and just grab that rotation X. So what's that? what that's doing is it's just inheriting the value of that rotation X and putting it on angle expression controller. So I can't control this thing. Like you can see that I'm moving it around, but it'll always jump back to whatever the value is here, which is 95. So it's 95 here. If I move through the animation further, you'll see that this value is changing with the X value of the actual wing rotation, 35.6, 35.6. This is one method of sort of creating values that you can reference in other compositions without having to create a million links back to this composition here. So you can sort of store them up here with different sliders and rotation values. It's a way to think about things and maybe a way to experiment so that you aren't constantly jumping from one composition to the other trying to reference them all. So based on this little chunk here, I'm able to go through in all of these layers that I want to respond to the wings flapping. As the character's wings flap, the whole body moves. And I would also encourage you to watch some slow motion bird flying videos on YouTube and you'll see what I'm talking about. I didn't want to have to animate that for every single flap, especially knowing that some of my flaps would be really fast, some would be slow, and sometimes they might be out of sync. And in all of the little pieces, so let's go back to the neck, there's this really, really basic piece of code. I have a little variable here that's defined as wing rotation X. Essentially, it equals that angle effect up at the top. Wing rotation X is equal to this guy up here. And I can show you how this is done just really quickly. So I create the variable wing rotation X equals, and then I just pick whip all the way up to grab that angle. I want that angle in there because I basically want to read what that angle is. Underscore, sorry, I need an underscore. But also don't forget to put the semicolon. The semicolon breaks up the code. It doesn't, it's not always required, but it's good practice just to put it in. And then the next thing I did is I left in the transform Z rotation because I want to keep whatever rotation I do, I want it to add the wing rotation X value to it. I don't want this to be the wing X rotation value. So if I put it like this, I have no control over the neck and I don't want that. So I need it to include the rotation value. So that gives me control of that object. Great. What is that orange thing? Okay. So essentially I, I have the rotation value of this right here plus the wing rotation value up here at the top. So I'm adding this guy right here onto it. And then I put a little point, value at time. 
time minus 0.075. I'm reading the actual X value 0.075 seconds prior to where it is now. So if it's at 24.2, I'm actually looking at it a little bit before that, not even a whole frame, just a little bit back. Okay, and then the last thing I have here is the times 0 0.035, and I did this to dampen this value. Uh, the wing rotation X value is currently at 67. I did not want to be adding 67 to this value right here because the head would be all the way up here. So I multiplied it by 0 0.035 to dampen it out. Now you can really play with these numbers. And the other thing you can do is play with this time value. The actual time value, when it's at a time of one, that's one second. But if it's at 0 0.5, that's half a second, obviously. And if it's at 0 0.1, it's a tenth of a second. So this is actually just under a tenth of a second. It does not read directly to frames. You have to actually calculate that on your own. That's what's going on in all of this. So I went through and I figured out what I needed those values to be just by playing with it. The one thing I actually did initially was I animated a bird flap. The process I went through was actually animating one flap of the wings one up and down so I just animated one flap and then I kept it as a loop okay so the bird just flapped over and over and then I worked on animating the body until the body looked good with the flaps and then after I did that I made I, I created this little bit of code and I made sure that I achieved the, at a certain point in time I achieved the same rotation value so that's pretty much it so you can start animating this guy and have all kinds of fun I've left the animation on this character so you can play with it. On the actual rocket, there is a there is a bulge effect that's happening for when the when the actual rocket launches. Okay, great. So I think that pretty much wraps up this video. Over the next few days, make sure you check back to get the rest of the Rocket D tutorials on making the wings using Freeform Pro, uh, creating the snow and fire with Particular, and rigging up the bird's body with the Puppet Tool.